Hi, I'm Vinura, an economist at the Reserve Bank of Australia. In this video, I'll take you through global and domestic economic conditions as of May 2025, as well as the RBA's board decision to cut the cash rate at its May meeting. In recent months, the world has been watching the United States and their tariffs. The first question to ask though is, what is a tariff? A tariff is a tax placed on goods imported from another country. It makes imported goods more expensive, which then encourages consumers to switch to purchasing goods that are produced domestically or from countries with lower tariffs. In April, the United States placed tariffs on the rest of the world. Most countries, including Australia, received a tariff of 10%. This means American consumers and businesses will pay 10% more on goods imported from Australia than they did before. Some countries, including China, received higher tariffs. So what does this mean for the global economy? In the United States, the cost of imports will increase. This provides an incentive for US consumers to shift their demand towards domestically produced goods and away from imported goods that were previously cheaper. But in many cases, domestic production is likely to be less efficient, meaning that consumers end up paying higher prices overall. By disrupting supply chains, reducing productivity and raising costs, tariffs will reduce the supply capacity of the US economy. At the same time, tariffs reduce the purchasing power of consumers and businesses, which could lead to lower spending in the US economy. For the rest of the world, tariffs will lead to a decline in export demand because US consumers and businesses will buy fewer imported goods. On top of this, trade tensions between large economies can create significant uncertainty. This graph shows how uncertainty has changed over time. In an environment of high uncertainty, households will increase precautionary saving and businesses will delay investment. This will further decrease aggregate demand in the global economy. So what does this mean for Australia? The direct effects of US tariffs on Australian exports is likely to be small, since exports to the US are a relatively small share of Australia's total exports. But there are also a range of indirect effects on Australia. First, it is important to think about the impact of US tariffs on Australia's other trading partners. The United States placed a 30% tariff on China, which is our largest trading partner. These tariffs will reduce US demand for Chinese exports and could therefore slow economic growth in China. If economic growth in China slows, this could reduce China's demand for Australian goods and in turn reduce our total exports. Overall, we think this indirect effect will be limited. This is because Chinese fiscal policy is expected to offset the negative effects of tariffs on Chinese economic growth. Second, the increased policy uncertainty, as we mentioned earlier, could also affect Australian economic activity. For example, if Australian companies are not sure about how things will pan out, they may choose not to invest. Let's turn to the Australian economy, starting with the labour market. Labour market conditions have been steady in recent months. The unemployment rate is basically unchanged since mid-2024, and the underemployment rate has stabilised since the start of the year after declining a bit last year. The unemployment rate tracks people who are actively looking for a job but don't have one. The underemployment rate tracks people who have a job but want to work more hours. Both measures are lower than their average levels over the past few decades, and the RBA continues to judge that the labour market is tight relative to full employment. A tight labour market means the demand for workers, or firms who want to hire, is strong relative to the supply of workers or people who want a job. And now, inflation. The RBA tries to keep inflation low and stable. To achieve this, we try to keep consumer price inflation between 2 and 3%. There are two key measures of inflation. Headline inflation captures the price of all goods and services in the Consumer Price Index. Underlying inflation excludes unusually large price changes. This means it provides a better understanding of overall inflation trends. Headline inflation was flat in the March quarter at 2.4%, while underlying inflation decreased in the March quarter from 3.3% to 2.9%. This is the first time since late 2021 that underlying inflation has been within the 2-3% target range. 
The key question is, where to from here for the Australian economy? The RBA is forecasting that Australian GDP growth will continue to recover, but at a slower pace than we thought at the beginning of the year. The unemployment rate is forecast to increase a little, while underlying inflation is forecast to return to around the middle of the 2-3% range and remain sustainably around there. However, there's an unusually large amount of uncertainty at the moment, so there are risks in both directions. With all that in mind, the RBA's Monetary Policy Board decided to lower the cash rate to 3.85% at its May meeting. The board decided it was appropriate to lower the cash rate because inflation is expected to ease a bit further and remain around the middle of the target. However, the board remains cautious given uncertainty is high and is ready to respond if needed. That concludes our look at current economic conditions. For more student resources, visit our education page. Links below in the description. Thanks for watching.